Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. We're now in the brand new year, 2019. I'm actually wearing my brand new Joe Cool t-shirt that I got as a Christmas gift. Very similar to my other Joe Cool t-shirt, which is in blue, but now it's in gray. It says chilled out right here. And Snoopy looking really cool as Joe Cool. <laughs> well, anyway, to start the new year, I decided to do a new movie review but of course the movie came out last year two months ago to be exact but since I just reviewed the Christmas special from 1966 along with the live-action adaptation with Jim Carrey all of which are based on the Dr. Seuss book from 1957 why not do the review of the CGI animated feature by Illumination Entertainment, the same guys that gave us uh, Despicable Me, Minions, and even their adaptation, The Lorax, The Grinch. <laughs> yes, The Grinch. You're me one, Mr. Grinch. I know I'm late on the game on this one, and Christmas had passed, but that's okay. I decided to review it in January because well it's still the holiday season so you know we're already um, spending time as it is it's very cold outside so I guess I've just got to be late on the game to do a Christmas movie <laughs> but it might as well just be an animated feature as it is so let's keep it that way but I saw it again and I loved it and it just gets better and better as it turns out. And I just put this on my best list. So I figured this would be a good time. And while I wouldn't say it's better than the live action adaptation, because I still enjoy that one. I mean, but it's close. And I wouldn't say it's better than the 1966 uh, classic holiday special, but of course because it's still a timeless classic as it is that's part of the book but as it was I love it I mean it's fun entertaining hilarious and at times it really does stay true to the book but they're just coming up with something new to the table yeah but of course like the live action adaptation Critics these days are always giving this a mixed review, you know, saying that there's nothing new to the material, but even though it just basically plays the same. I mean, they say they praise the animation, though, but they just don't seem to care about the story and the source material. But whatever, man. You know, the same guys who, who did the same thing with the live action movie, you know. They praise their performance, but they don't care about anything else. So, they just rather stick to the 1966 holiday special and the book. It's fine by me, but everybody should have their own choice too. Okay, so they're always going to love the 1966 classic as well as the book, so why not have their own choice? You know, it's like sometimes I like to try something new these days or maybe see a new version of it for the best of it <clears throat> so it's no big deal it stars Benedict Cumberbatch it's the same actor who's in movies like Black Mass The Imitation Game as well as Doctor Strange and he, is, he was also in the TV series Sherlock yeah, he plays Sherlock Holmes it's hard to believe but he does the voice of the Grinch Rashida Jones, Keenan Thompson, yes, Keenan Thompson, Keenan Kill, all that, Heavyweights, um, the Mighty Ducks sequels, even Saturday Night Live, <laughs> all come to mind. Plus, he's one of my favorite actors, too, and favorite comedians as well. <laughs> yeah, I can't go wrong with him. Kevin Seeley. Angela Lansbury and Pharrell Williams. Yes, Pharrell Williams is not only the narrator of the film, but he's also a singer. 
It's written by Michael Lashier and Tommy Sherlow. Also to note that Dr. Seuss's widower, Audrey Geisel, had just recently passed away um, later in December. But it will definitely be a dedication to her. So this is their last uh, adaptation. So she will be missed. And she, but at least she's now with her husband, Dr. Seuss himself, uh, Ted Geisel. Anyway, and it's directed by Scott Masir and Yaro Chetney. The movie begins set in the town of Whoville, where all the Who's are celebrating Christmas every year. You know, selling all the gifts, you know, going Christmas shopping and having all the Christmas carolers around singing the song Welcome Christmas and so on and so forth. They they really love Christmas so much, but the only one that doesn't, which he lives all the way on top of Mount Crumpet, is, you guessed it, the Grinch. It was voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch, and he lives with his dog Max inside the cave where he just can't stand listening to Christmas music being played in the background whenever the alarm clock uh, whenever his alarm clock uh, goes on so he just uh, slams it, he throws everything out and, and it goes all the way down <laughs> into the, the ground so he just breaks so he just goes up, you know, getting dressed, you know, you know just you know, coming out with his own rants about why he hates Christmas so much. But we also learned uh, during his childhood days that yes, you know, he once loved Christmas, but suddenly it just disappeared, and and decided that you know no one cares about it. So that's why he just moved all the way up to uh, Mount Crumpet and stayed there ever since. So either. He suddenly found out that they were out of food, so he decided to go all the way down to Whoville, you know, just going to the market, trying to get away from all the Christmas carolers around. So he's just getting a can of Who Hash and all these other foods that he needs, yeah, along with Max. But then he bumps into Cindy Lou Who, who's voiced by Cameron Seeley, who just came down just to deliver a letter to Santa. But Grinch, as usual, just being very rude to all the Who's, including her. So it's, or maybe it's just wanted him to help, or maybe he just wanted to help her out. But of course, he's lying. But then we also meet um, a citizen uh, from Whoville named Brecko Bomb, who's voiced by Keenan Thompson. Yeah, so he's like a lumberjack type of guy. You know, he has a long beard. But he loves to decorate uh, all this uh, Christmas lighting around, you know, and it looks really nice <laughs> in this entire house. And um, he's also very quirky and and a very kind and gentle uh, character right there. You know, he even loves uh, the Grinch, but, you know, trying to get to know him better. But nevertheless, he just, he loves Christmas so much that he loves to grab... A giant, uh, three times bigger Christmas tree, so he'll be able to set it off inside his house. <laughs> so that's really cool. Yeah. So meanwhile, Cindy Lou does live with her mom, whose whose name is Donna Lou, who's voiced by Rochetta Jones. She's overworked and she's a widower. She also has two young sons that are inference yeah they're actually twins yeah and they're both named Buster and Bean so Cindy Lou uh, suddenly spends time with her friends you know trying to come up with a plan to kidnap uh, Santa Claus during Christmas Eve so that way she'll have it planned by sending up all the traps but even the Grinch has uh, his own plan out of his own because we already know the story since he can't stand Christmas so much, he decided, well, 
he wants to steal Christmas. So the only plan to do so was to find a reindeer. So he has to go all the way in this freezing weather, yeah, in that that incredible blizzard, just to find the right reindeer for the job. Because he already has his sleigh ready, all custom built, looks incredibly beautiful. Um, so he tries to find some of the good ones, but they all but because of that goat that keeps following him around I mean he was going to grab that one but it was too late that suddenly um, all the uh, the reindeers have ran away except for one big reindeer very fat and named him Fred too <laughs> so he decided to plan uh, a test where he's going to try out his new sleigh so he can go all the way down to Whoville, so he'll be able to do his own plan to, you know, to steal everything. <laughs> but then Fred suddenly uh, abandons them by actually meeting uh, a girl um, reindeer along with uh, her son. So they fell in love. So there you go. So then he decided uh, he might as well just work with um, with Max instead. <laughs> yeah, which well, is a shame though because he does actually have a custom made uh, seat just for for Max, so that way they'll join in. <laughs> uh, during Christmas Eve, uh, they're already you know setting up all the Christmas lights uh, by Mayor uh, by the Mayor of Whoville, who's elderly, named Mayor Mc. Gerkel, who's voiced by Angela Lansbury, so she's about to set up uh, the the Christmas tree, gathering all the lights uh, that's lighting up for the town of Whoville. Just when uh, <laughs> when the Grinch was about to plan his uh, latest um, pranks and all his other uh, techniques that he wants to do, and also trying to spy on on the town of Whoville just to see. What he was about to check out, you know, with his latest equipment. Well, he suddenly fell all the way on top of the tree, and then he suddenly goes all the way up. Just as the light suddenly uh, <laughs> lights up. So that's really cool. So now um, he finally makes his plan for Christmas Eve to finally steal all everything door to door, as usual, you know. Stealing all the gifts, the the Christmas tree, the stockings, everything. But he comes up with his own um, equipment, such as using the <laughs> those uh, candy cane guns just to shoot uh, all these gifts that's all captured, and and be able to stuff it all inside those red bags and. Hard to believe, but those bags suddenly they actually shrunk and just puts it all the way straight into the sleigh and collects every single one of them from door to door just before he got captured by Cindy Lou. <laughs> and that's where uh, the Grinch suddenly makes a promise to uh, Cindy Lou about having to help um, her uh, Christmas gift, and that's about her mom. Because she works all the time, she never spends time, you know, with Cindy Lou. Not to mention her, her two uh, twin sons. So that's why they had a babysitter to take care of. And plus, Cindy Lou just spends time with her friends, you know, just, just gathering around to come up with their own plan. So, so that's why. So he stole Christmas. Trying to go all the way on top of the hill and try to find out if everyone's going to be sad and miserable during that day. And But in the end, they, they begin to learn that it's not just the gifts, it's the hearts. So that's when they started to sing the song, Welcome Christmas. Yeah, fa do do is a do do is welcome Christmas. Yeah. So, uh... Of course, with the help of uh, <laughs> the reindeers, 
because just when they were about to slip off, you know, with the Grinch uh, already falling down, you know, with the gifts and the sleigh, uh, Max helped out, you know, with Fred, his, the girl reindeer, and the son. So they pulled up and finally <laughs> they made it to the top. And, and that's when the Grinch suddenly, uh, you know, grew stronger than ever, you know, actually, uh, actually has a heart. <laughs> so now he went all the way down back to Whoville to return all the gifts that he stole and this is where he explained to everyone in town about what his real problem was that it turns out that yes the main reason why he stole it was because even though he lied and everything he actually told the truth that he just doesn't like being alone. And he felt like, you know, things were just not going so well for him, you know, during his last Christmas, ever since he was uh, very young. So now he, you know, he apologized to everyone, and, and because of that, the rest of the Who's decided to invite him, well, with the help of Cindy Lou, to Christmas. So that way he'll have a Christmas dinner. And he was actually um, chosen to carve, you know, the hoop beast. Yeah, the, the feast that they're about to have. <laughs> and be able to explain everything. So, that this was his first Christmas in 53 years. So, yep, so they had a wonderful Christmas down in Whoville. <laughs> so, I had to say, it was very wonderful and very well made. Love the animation that they chose. Uh, love the voice acting that they actually choose. And it really works, in my opinion. And there's a lot of hilarious moments here and there that actually, uh, that I'll never forget. Even though, yes, the soundtrack is a film with today's uh, stars that we got. Although they have a mix of Christmas music, as we all know. Like for example, they put uh, the song from from Jingle All the Way, <laughs> yeah, the movie Jingle All the Way, by the Brian Sisler Orchestra, which was called Jingle Bells. Never thought I would hear that one. And they also put uh, Nat King Cold's song, uh, yeah, the Christmas song. Uh, even Deck the Halls by Jackie Wilson, My Favorite Friends by The Supremes. A run DMC song called Christmas Is. <laughs> uh, but Tyler, the creator, um, hip hop artist, actually sang the, the song You're a Mean One. It's the Grinch in a whole different way. I was not a big fan of that version that they got, so I, I'd rather stick to the one with Furl Ravencroft, which they should have used in the first place. And they should have also, or at this rate, maybe I'll take the Jim Carrey one also. But they, they should, have, but in my opinion, they should have chose for Old Raven's Croft. I mean, he's so much better. Um, they also got Danny Elfman to do the score, so it's really cool that he he took the time to compose uh, everything that fits in the spirit. And Pharrell Williams, um, he did the best he could to narrate the story, but. I still would have preferred someone else do it, someone who could do it better, like Anthony Hopkins, for instance, and for the live action adaptation. Yeah, maybe someone else, but that's all right. Um, but again, um, it, it, I thought it's interesting that they got Benedict Cumberbatch doing the voice of the Grinch. I mean, it's it's times I'm starting to feel like, you know, I I couldn't even recognize him as much. And you know, seeing that this is the same man who to play Doctor Strange. <laughs> so, but hey, you know, he did a great job. Uh, but it was also interesting to have Keenan Thompson uh, do the voice of a of a citizen, the Brickle Bomb. So, yeah, he was, uh, yeah, he was very kind, gentle, and, and he was hilarious, too. I, I love the moment where <laughs> the Grinch suddenly... Uh, was about to be chased down by Bricklebomb's dog 
and he was trying to, you know, try to steal all of, of the Christmas decorations and everything inside his house, but, or just trying to spy, but he wants to, uh, <laughs> escaping, and wants to fall all the way down to the sleigh where it just moves. <laughs> and <laughs> Rekko Braun was just a bit surprised <laughs> while he was just eating uh, some cake and his <laughs> Is it just me, or do I just spot Santa Claus coming by? <laughs> oh, that was just funny. Uh, he's just hilarious. Um, of course, Rashida Jones did a fine job uh, doing the voice of Donna Lou, even though she was uh, uh, an overwork. And yes, we learned that that her husband died. Um, granted, um, nevertheless, she was a nice and caring mother. Or for Cindy Lou. And Karen Seeley, who does the voice of Cindy Lou, was uh, very special. And I think she's a fine uh, great actress that they got, so hopefully she'll get a career someday in the future. But, uh, yeah, everyone was great in this movie, in, in my opinion, so I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, the only thing I just... I kind of dismiss a little bit was the, the hip hop songs, but otherwise, that's fine. I thought this was a great film to watch. I mean, if you love uh, all the other Grinch uh, stories, and if you love the 1966 special and the live action adaptation, then then give this one a chance. It's It has a heart to it, and it's sweet, it's caring, and it's also hilarious, so you'll have a good time. Especially if you watch this uh, during Christmas or any other holiday season. <laughs> so, and it's good to see that it's doing so well at the box office. It actually made uh, $46.9.4 million uh, out of its 75th million budget. So, it grew strong. So anyway, uh, that's The Grinch and I give it, what else? Five stars. I'm Joseph Isabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.